I'm blown away at how angry people get when you tell them the truth, at how angry people get when you give them a message of warning. It's so true what is written. They say to the seers, see no more visions, and to the prophets, give us no more visions of what is right. Tell us pleasant things. Prophesy illusions. Leave this way. Get off this path and stop confronting us with the Holy One of Israel. Let me tell you God's response to that. Because you have rejected this message, relied on oppression, and depended on deceit, this sin will become for you like a high wall cracked and bulging that collapses suddenly in an instant. It will break in pieces like pottery, shattered so mercilessly that among its pieces, not a fragment will be found for taking coals from a hearth or scooping water out of a cistern. I'm so disgusted. I mean, it's, it, it is so true what God says to Ezekiel. I'm sending you to an obstinate people, to people whose language is not obscure. So they should understand the very words that you're saying. They should know who I am. They should know what's in my word. And you are to speak this message whether they listen or not. They are an obstinate people. What is my motivation for doing this? What do I gain out of speaking a message to you that hasn't happened yet? Putting myself out on the line to speak a message to you that has not happened yet, that you don't want to hear, and yet so many will go onto these false prophets' websites and channels and listen to them all day preach peace, peace. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you there is no peace. I'm telling you, you need to return to him and the devastation is coming. What do I gain out of that? What did Jeremiah gain? What did Ezekiel gain? Any of the prophets, any of the servants of God, any of the apostles, the son of God himself, they killed all of them because they didn't want to hear their message. They didn't want to hear that their ways are wrong. Counterfeit Christianity has people so bogged down in this delusion that the people that we're contending with are pagans in the world, people who don't know God. Well, let me ask you, did pagans kill Jesus? Did pagans hand him over? What about the prophets? What about the apostles? Who handed him over? Their own people. Did God make a covenant with pagans? Did he call them the salt of the earth? Did he tell them when I send these things, if the pagans will turn to me who don't know me, then I'll heal the earth? No, the things that are happening right now are not because of pagans. They're not because of pagan government. It's because of his own people. That's why he has brought destruction. That's why he will bring destruction again. That's why his voice is getting louder. You're hearing things that you've never heard. You've never heard that there was a first and second resurrection. And yet, if you had read your Bible, you would have seen in Re Revelation that it says first resurrection. In if you have a first, there's got to be at least a second. You're hearing for the first time that you have a covenant. And that, co that covenant has to be fulfilled and that it includes suffering and grief and mourning and lament and returning to God. You're hearing for the first time that you're going to be martyred if you're in him. And that only the martyrs are going up in the first resurrection. It says so plainly in Revelation 20. Those are the only ones who John sees. You're hearing for the first time that the mark of the beast is not some chip. It's something much deeper than that. The mark of the beast comes from your heart. Out of your right hand, your deeds. Out of your forehead, your thoughts. And out of your mouth. Jesus said that nothing that goes into you defiles you, but it's what's coming out of you because it comes from your heart. But people don't want to hear that because it was a lot easier to just watch for that chip, that tattoo, that whatever, AI. And at the end of the day, anyone who rejects the words that God has me speaking does not discern whether I'm from God. They will perish because they did not love truth. I know the things that I'm speaking are true. They will not have knowledge because they rejected it. Not because God didn't send his prophets yet again to warn of what was coming, to call you back to him, to call you back to his word, to call you back to truth, to give you a place to assemble, to show you how to obey his commands and his holy days and new moon and his Sabbaths. No, it's because people don't care. These are things they've never heard. They're not familiar with their Bible, so they don't even know how to defend it. They just dislike and unsubscribe. Why? Ask questions. I could care less how many people there are subscribed here. What grieves me is that people not only don't know how to defend their faith, but they're not willing to defend their faith. They're not even willing to search the word to see if what I'm saying is true. It's a lot easier to swallow the poison that David Jeremiah is speaking, right? 
that you're going to be pre-tribulation raptured, that you aren't required to assemble, that you can pick any day of the week and you can call that Sabbath. Those lies will perish with you. I know that the things that I'm saying are true and they should shake you up and it should freak you out that it is so far from what's being preached at the pulpit. It's so far from what you have been raised with. And you know what? I'm willing to sit here and and hash it out with you. I'm willing to sit here and study the word with you. I'm willing to do whatever it takes for those who actually love God to come to truth. Pagans are not your enemy. It's those who claim to see, but don't, who are your enemy. Those are the people who are going to persecute and kill true Christians. The harlot of Revelation is not a government writing church. It is a church controlling government. It is a church that is writing that beast. I hear people talking about, oh, during COVID, they shut down the churches. You think God cares about that? You are meant to worship him in the truth and in the spirit, not in a cathedral, not in a temple, a physical temple, and not in a church. Those churches are the prostitutes that bore out of their harlot mother. They continue in her practices. Her cross to Tammuz, the image, the image of pictures of Jesus, the image of little nativity scenes and statues and figurines, Sunday Sabbath, the counterfeit birthday of Jesus that is actually said to be the birth date of their false god Mithras, the sun god, that you worship on Sunday and Christmas. Really? Jesus was born on December 25th? I didn't know the Gregorian calendar existed in the Bible. Is that a way to get God to submit to you? What about Easter? To replace the day that God extended the covenant to us, died on the cross to make us clean? Easter? We call that a Christian holiday? No one wants to consider these things. They're angry that I would even suggest them. Even though I have nothing to gain, you don't pay me counterfeit tithing. I take nothing from you. So why do people not understand the message that I'm speaking? I'm going to tell you why. Because Jesus told us exactly why. Because these people who call themselves Christian have no love for God in their hearts. They are children of the devil. His sheep know his voice. Christ's sheep know his voice and they follow him. They don't dislike and unsubscribe from his message. They are not married to falsehood. They make a decision every day to be married to truth, no matter how they have to suffer for it, no matter how difficult it is to hear, that's what's in their heart. And they're able to hear the message that comes from him, that comes from his word. You can back it up. I mean, the things that I'm saying, you can look them up in the scriptures. Why is that so difficult? I can't believe what's going on right now. I got up and thought that I had spoken a message of encouragement. I didn't realize that the message was so inconvenient to people who simply refuse to believe in the truth. I can't believe it. And yet the Bible tells us that this is exactly what's going to happen. Everything has unfolded exactly as he has said it was going to happen. I just honestly had no idea. I had no idea how bad this was going to be that a message of warning would send people running rather than stop them and cause them to return to God. It's no wonder why God will have to bring them low. If you're still here and you're hearing this, please take it seriously. Please return to God. Ask him if the message that I'm speaking is true. And if it is true, then ask him what you need to do because this is only your life. There's not going to be a second chance. This is your eternal life. If this message makes you feel afraid, good. Go, sort it through with him. Don't come to me as though I'm your intercessor. I'm not. Go sort it through with him. I'm not meant to do anything for you. And you know, what I see in counterfeit Christianity is that pastors set themselves up as important people in your life. And it's not supposed to be that way. That's idolatry. I'm not important. I'm doing my duty at the end of the day. That's it. I can shepherd you to God. That's it. I can share my testimony with you. I can share what's in the word. I can share what I feel by the spirit, but I am not your intercessor and neither is some priest or some 
false prophet, even a real prophet. No one is going to speak a word to you directly, individually. That's never happened. A message of prosperity and God wants to do this and that for you. That is a psychic reading. That's nonsense. If God wants to do something for you, he'll speak to you directly, provided that you're actually talking with him. But to think that God's prophets are somehow going to come and give you a a wonderful message is absurd. His prophets are sent when you haven't been listening to him. When you have strayed from truth, they're sent to correct and warn and cause you to return to him. These things that are going on in the world right now are not because of pagans. They're not because of government. There is a different war that we're fighting. And God's people need to stop listening to the world to tell them how to think, especially the world in counterfeit Christianity. It is so incredibly dangerous. Return to him in the way that he said you must worship, which is in the spirit and in truth.